Oh, right, right, right. What's going on, everybody? Well, a lot of you might be thinking, you know, has the Zerg Cabal just pulled the wool over everyone's eyes? and made them argue about Protoss and maybe Protoss versus Terran as a big focus. Uh, myself included in my Balance Ramp video, I talked a lot about PVT, right? Haven't been mentioning Zerg. Are they going under the radar? Don't worry. I have been tipped off that the Broodlord may in fact be a massive problem in the proposed notes. So we are going to be breaking down what the hell has happened with the Broodlord and why this is such a big concern. This all started a few days ago. Uh, Upper Tree Zelda messaged me and said, man, Broodlord doing double damage. This is insane. You know, this, this patch is going to bring, bring back Broodlord and Fester. I'm really worried. And I was really confused because I didn't understand where this was coming from. He said, yeah, the Broodlord has double effective DPS now. And I was like, double? A bit of extra attack speed on the Broodling, which is simply reverting a previous nerf. And a few hit points on the Broodlings, that's not going to double the damage of a Broodlord. And that's when Sal told me, hey, actually, this bug fix does way more than you think it does because the Broodlord used to basically attack at about half of the speed it does with this fix in there at max range. But to be honest, Broodlords are often attacking at max range, especially against Terran when they're kind of poking in, throwing a volley, pulling out, going in, throwing a volley and pulling out. So this has sent me down a rabbit warren. We're doing some research right now. What changed about the Broodlord, number one? Um, what nerfs it got, what buffs it got, how it operates even before any of these patch changes, because a lot of people don't understand how the Broodlord works. It's one of the fanciest units in the game. It has a lot of weird behavior quirks that I'm going to try my best to explain to you. Um, we've also got a game watching the Broodlord in action in a late game Zerg vs. Terran that we're going to be casting. So stay around for, for that. Um, I haven't watched the replay yet, but I've heard we've got uh, Broodlord vs. Viking, Ghost, Thor, all of the different Terran things. Um, as well as interacting with planetary fortresses and all that sort of stuff. So this should be a very revelationary game that we can add on top of our research. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about the patch changes. We've got Broodling hit points increased, Broodling cooldown on the attack, so attack speed increased, and fix this bug. But to understand that, let's rewind. Rewind, when did the Broodlord start getting patched? January 2023. 5.0.11, the infamous patch um, that I complained about a lot in my, my, my balance rant video. So basically what they did here is the movement speed was increased uh, slightly on the Broodlord, but they lowered the duration of the Broodlings themselves from 5.71 seconds to 3.57 seconds. And this was huge because at the time this was coming out of a very turtly stalemate meta. You guys might remember maps like Glittering Ashes, maps like Hardwire, where there was a lot of late game turtling going on. And we saw a lot of these sort of situations. So this here is Dark First Beyond from July 27th, 2022. 2022. Um, this was just like a weekly cup, I think. I think it was like an EPT career. And watch what watch what he was doing here. I mean, this is this is crazy. So what you're gonna notice here is basically the Broodlord is attacking its own broodlings so that Dark can siege Beyond from two screens away, or a screen and a half away. So notice every wave, what he does is he pulls some of his broodlings back on the backside of the wave and then attacks his own broodling again so that he can spawn the broodlings and then just run them into Beyond from a screen away. And Beyond's like, are you serious, man? <laughs> and Dark's just there. And even though we don't have cameras, you can see the grin on Dark's face going, <laughs> infinite rage, range broodlords. To be fair, this was a kind of funny example because I remember Beyond handled this so badly where he doesn't have any Hellbats in the mix. He kept sieging his tanks and friendly firing his own units, which was exacerbating it but it definitely was kind of crazy the way players could do this i remember we would often do this where to get the attack wave started you just throw down a creep tumor with a queen attack your creep tumor and then you just start just a move broodling pull back broodling, broodling attack broodling and you just keep doing this over and over and over and over again and it was super super brutal there was a bunch of times Dark especially did this, guys, in kind of stalemate games. He did it versus Kua here as well on, uh, what was this, Waterfall, beautiful map. Bit of a standoff. He just kind of sieged him from far away. Kept on attacking his own Broodlings as well. And this one it was actually a, it could have been a draw game, but Kua left not realizing that Dark actually had nothing that shoots up. Either way, so they basically nerfed that. Next patch came out, 5.012, and this was three more changes to the Broodlord. Broodling move speed reduced drastically from 5.37 to 4.13. Broodling health reduced from 30 to 20 and Broodling attack speed reduced from 0 0.46 to 0 0.57. So they said, look, continuing in the direction of the last balance update, and, and they did give more movement speed to the Broodlord, by the way. This was, the previous one was about 0.25 movement speed boost. Um, sorry, let's be exact. It was, yeah, uh, 0 0.27. Whereas this one is, uh, 
0 0.38. So that's, that's like pretty big movement speed boosts when you combine those together. It's a total of over 0 0.6 movement speed boost for the Broodlord, which is pretty massive, about 0 0.65. Um, they basically said, look, we're going to give the Broodlord more mobility, but we just don't want the Broodlings to be as powerful. The Broodlords can be more of like a unit that, that appears throws their broodlings, gets some damage from far away, and then ducks out. And, and it's it's less of just a powerful front-on siege unit that you can't really engage into and create stalemates. We want it to be more of a surprise your opponent in an area, get some damage, and move somewhere else. And of course, in the most recent patch, there was no changes to the broodlord. So that's how we got to this broodlord state. Now, there's a really nice video here from Gemini. So let's take a look at how the broodlord operates pre and post patch to get a feel for exactly what the hell the difference is. So you're going to notice this is pre-patch, and let's talk about the behavior of the Broodlords. So the way the Broodlord works, guys, is when the Broodlord first arrives at battle, and unfortunately this clip doesn't show it. Yeah, here we go. See the bottom Broodlord has two Broodlings behind it. So basically a Broodlord can kind of load ammo of up to two Broodlings, and they will hover behind it. So if we go back just a second there, you can see when they get in range, the, broodlord, the Broodlings, and we're just going to keep watching that over and over again, they float from in front of the Broodlord to, in, to from behind the Broodlord to in front, and then they shoot. So this is what happens, is the Broodlord moves to its maximum range, stops, Broodling moves forward, then it shoots. This is the bug, the delay on its attack at maximum range due to the fact that even though the Broodlord's in range, the Broodling isn't in range. So just pay attention to these Broodlings. Notice they move forward and then they shoot. And then whenever the Stalkers are closer, See, these stalkers kind of came a bit closer. They're actually close enough. These broodlings are shooting instantly now because they're not they're actually already in range, even when they spawn behind the broodlord. See, they're popping out, they're not even moving to the back, they're just shooting. But now that these stalkers are further away, they're out of range. So the broodlings are popping out, going to the back, shifting to the front, and then firing again. So the DPS just went really high for a little bit, then it dropped. Now the stalkers are close, the DPS is just spiked up because the Broodlord's shooting way faster, and now they're at maximum range, it's going to drop down again. And this, if you were especially, I guess, a low-level player or someone who just A moves your Broodlords, this is a crazy difference to damage. Whenever you just attack move Broodlords, this is naturally what happens. If they blink underneath, of course, you're just you're shooting constantly. If you move a bit closer, they're shooting, they're, they're shooting constantly. Or if you spin your Broodlord. What do you mean by spin the Broodlord? I mean, if you turned around your Broodling would automatically be facing the enemy. So what you could do is if you're fighting at max range, you could just click your Broodlords away for a fraction of a second so they turn around, then tell them to attack again, and the Broodlings will attack. I can almost guarantee you players like Serral knew they needed to do this, and don't get me wrong, they're more often than not usually moving in, shooting, moving out, because they don't want to get jumped on by Vikings or Thors or anything anyway. But I guarantee you, they were taking advantage of this micro. All right, guys, so let's go take a look here at a Serral versus Maru fight. This is obviously pre-patch. Notice here, maximum range. Look at how much those Broodlings are just hanging out in front of the Broodlords. And here, the Hellbats are a little closer. They shoot a bit faster. But then they go back to, you see the Broodlings floating in front of the Broodlords and the delay on them attacking. So it's funny. Here, too much focus on other things. Even Serral was not always spinning the Broodlords. I was kind of expecting to go back through the VODs and to see him spinning the Broodlords a lot more in a way I'd never noticed. But after looking at through a, video, a few videos, there were times where he was kind of moving in, moving out, and it had that effect. But I'm not sure if even he was consciously spinning the Broodlords, which if you guys are wondering, why am I saying spinning? Um, this just makes me think of like Age of Empires 4 ship micro, for those who don't know where you've got cannons on both sides of your ship, right? So you would have these funny situations, and I think they still do it to this day, though I haven't really been following competitive AOE 4. If you got cannon ships, you'd, you'd basically go up, attack the enemy, the boat would turn on its side, and it would shoot its cannon on one side. And if you don't do anything, it's just got to wait for that cannon to reload, shoot again. But if you click it in a certain way, you could get all your boats to basically spin in a circle in the same spot to take advantage of this cannon shoots, you flip to the other side, so while that cannon's reloading, the other cannon shoots, and you would repeat this over and over again. But looking through a lot of videos of Serral using Broodlords, he's not he's often not doing it. So even Serral, this was something which was very drastically affecting the damage output of the Broodlords. Now you might be thinking, is this something that snuck in recently? No, this has pretty much either been there since the very early days or since the very beginning of the Broodlord. The Broodlord has always been a kind of funky unit. 
And keep in mind, we were talking about the broodlings, like I was showing you guys that other clip. I mean, let's look at that again. Um, just remember, the the broodlord is always going to do more damage if you've got uh, if you've if you've recharged. Its first attack will shoot two broodlings, and then it's only shooting one broodling at a time because it's not fully loaded. Notice, one broodling, one broodling, one broodling. Whereas if you move out, come back, throw a shot, and you've recharged both broodlings, you're obviously throwing two broodlings at once. Now, I don't think that means the broodlings themselves do 20 damage per hit. Actually, that's a good question. If anyone knows, I might as well check it. I'm recording a video. Let's be professional. Let's go check. If you have two broodlings, does it do the 20 broodlord strike damage twice as well as spawning two broodlings? Or is it always just the one 20 damage from the broodlord? Because that actually makes a really big difference in terms of the amount of burst damage that the broodlord does on each initiation. All right, check this out, guys. So we've got a Broodlord. It's got two Broodlings saved. This is actually on the PTR, but that shouldn't affect anything. The question for me is, is it going to do 20 damage to this Archon? No shield upgrades. So we're just going to hold position the Archon. Or is it going to do more than that? So we're just going to attack it. And... Oh, yeah, it, it took 20 times two. So it, it basically took 20 damage times two, because I saw it drop to three uh to 330 uh, and then down to 310 on its shields we can show you guys one more time if you watch its shields you can see if you save up the two broodlings then that actually does do double the uh the broodling strike damage so watch its shields guys yeah you can see it went down by 40 it was at 347 it went down to 307 and then the broodlings themselves start attacking it now, I don't think anything changes the speed at which the broodlings themselves respawn. But you can see, we've got one, we've got two. And what's your... You're at 147? You're going to be at 110. Yeah, 107. So that's fascinating. That's so fascinating, isn't it, guys? Now, this is post-patch as well with the broodlord. And you can see... Even though it's at maximum range, it just keeps shooting. Just keeps shooting there constantly. So that's actually really cool to know. All right, guys, so now let's actually look at the post-patch change here. I just showed you in-game kind of how the little broodlings work. Once again, let's watch the pre-patch. So you can see high DPS, but then there's no stalker in range in, or, or within uh, uh, below maximum range. You can see broodlings are taking forever to throw in on those stalkers. Now we're going to see post-patch in just a few seconds. Let's go post-patch. Okay, here we go. Okay, so this is post-patch, where even at maximum distance, you can see the broodlings aren't... When they pop out in the center of the broodlord, previously they would shift to the back, then move to the front, and then throw. They would only operate like this if the stalkers were a bit closer, closer further forward. So you can see, in terms of an A-move scenario, I mean, this is a much quicker fight, right? Way, way more, way more damage coming out in a no-micro situation. That took 36 seconds, it says, in real time. How long did it take in the first fight to kill all those stalkers? A minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is that correct? Did it start at zero seconds? Or, or is this is this real time not correct? I don't think this real time... No, the real time timer is not correct, guys. It starts at like 20 seconds. Whew. I was worried for a second. Okay, so this one starts at 12.30. And, and when do we actually kill all the stalkers? This is pre-patch. So pre-patch was 12.30... And we killed them all at 13.09, so 39 seconds. And then post-patch starts at 13.43. So it was 39 seconds. I'm going to write that down so I don't forget. <laughs> so this one starts at 43. Forty-three. And we killed the last stalker at 14.08, which is what? 17 plus 8. It's at 25. So from 25 seconds to 39 seconds. That's that's massive. Obviously, this is not the most realistic situation. Just both of you standing there, just attack moved. But that is pretty massive because there are situations when Broodlords do just stand and fight. From 25 seconds to kill, was it nine Stalkers? I think it's nine Stalkers that we start with. Yeah. To, to 39, 39 seconds pre-patch, 25 post-patch. Sorry, this is kind of blowing my mind. I'm realizing just how big that time difference is. So I don't think this is necessarily double the overall damage um keep in mind i mean so there's two things here guys there's all there's the bug but there's also the broodlings themselves are attacking faster so there are two things that we're doing at once here and it's a little hard to separate them 
I, I think it makes a pretty big difference still. But I think I, there's no way the weapon cooldown alone means these stalkers are dying that fast. Something we could do to test this, though, is having units with a bit more splash damage that are killing the broodlings very quickly so that we can kind of just see the difference of the broodlord attacking a bit faster rather than the other way. Then again... Sorry, the reason I'm, I'm second-guessing myself right now because I'm realizing, wait, if isn't it overall, across a period of time, going to be doing the same damage output anyway? Isn't it just the first attack is faster? Because once you're standing and fighting, you're showing, you're throwing your broodlings constantly. You're never, you're never getting to two broodlings. So it should only be constrained by how long it takes broodlings to respawn. This is fascinating. There's so many questions I have about how this works and you can start to see why this is so complicated. Now, if we look at the actual patch changes, broodling hit point is increased from 20 to 30. Broodling weapon cooldown decreased from 0.57 to 0.46 and fixed the bug, which prevented broodlord from dealing full damage. So, yeah, you're making the broodlings a little pop buffer. You're making them do more damage, but then you're also fixing this, this bug, which is very poorly written. It should say, which prevented the broodlord from um, attacking immediately at max. It fixed the bug, which... Or fixed the behavior, it should say. It should, it should say fix the behavior where the broodlord would delay attacks uh, or would attack much slower when at maximum range is what this should really read and that is really quite big i personally err on the side of if you're going to do this last one just do this last one and keep the broodling super nerfed and what this does is it fits with the changes that have been happening where remember guys we've made the broodlords faster multiple times so this way the broodlord can get in throw a shot move away get in throw a shot move away and you keep more of that mobile kind of hit and run uh i'm, I'm trying to catch my opponent out of position choice with the broodlord as opposed to that i'm just spawning an army of broodlings that are just chomping your face down with their crazy attack speed absorbing all this damage with their hit points so I think we probably want to separate these and test them in isolation. Not that we can do that right now, but what we can do is we can cast a game and actually check out what the hell goes on. Okay, guys, and I just remembered one last note. If you guys have heard us talk about Serral's uh, crazy long 13 or 12 range Broodlords in 2018, um, back in this time, um, basically what happened is Serral had realized in 2018, if you attacked a specific unit with the Broodlord, you could actually attack from 12 range rather than 10 range. So he would very commonly keep his broodlords very far back from the enemy army and he would just target a unit individually every time he'd attack his broodlords and dance in and out. And he would actually, you know, people always wondered why was Serral so unkillable in 2018? He kind of figured out this broodlord behavior and it took a long time for people to even realize that his broodlords were attacking further than anybody else's. People just thought, oh, he's just so good at dancing in and out with his broodlords. But yeah, he was dancing in and out, but he was also attacking from two range further. And that specifically is just due to, you know, how weird the unit behaves with all the stuff we've talked about. And they did nerf that. They got rid of that. Um, here's a Reddit thread from five years ago where Stealth Breed says, look, it's, it's a property in the editor. You know, the broodlord has an ability called Hanger. You guys know the way the, 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 the broodlings spawn next to it. That, it that's called Hanger. And basically, that's how they handle their payload, broodlords and carriers. So it gives a leash range to the broodlings. And basically, that that leash range uh, was set to 12, which maybe made the broodlings like look a bit more organic or whatever, and maybe made them a bit more natural in shooting from far away. But uh, basically, yeah, you can... If you set the, the, the hanger range to 10, the broodlord's A-click behavior seems to correctly match its A-move behavior. Whereas... If you were A-clicking, so targeting a specific unit, if you were targeting an individual unit, it would just shoot from 12 range. Whereas if you attack moved, it wouldn't. You'd just have to, the Broodlord would wander up into 10 range and start firing in exactly the same way that we've shown so far. So they did change that. They changed the, the hanger leash range to 10 and got rid of that. But just keep in mind, that was probably around for all of StarCraft 2 up to 2018, as far as I know. And it was only like 2018 when Serral figured it out and really took advantage of it. So... The crazy things that go on in StarCraft with different weird odd unit behavior that you don't even know or understand. Like the Oracle is another one, which is just crazy and has so many weird, unique, specific things with how you control it, which is why there's such a big difference between the best Oracle users and your average, average pro gamer when they use the Oracle and don't get nearly as much value. All right, all right, all right. Well, and on that note, guys, let's actually cast the game. Now that we've learned all this stuff about Broodlords, let's watch what the hell goes on. Um, I'm, I'm so fascinated. I've 
reminded myself about the fact that Broodlords have two rather than a single Broodling, which I'd actually forgotten about. I just don't actively think about it when I use Broodlords. I mean, we've, we've looked at the behavior. This is obviously on the PTR. It's on El Dorado. And we've got Bingo King, a very good 5.4k Grand, or 5.5k, I think even, Grandmaster Zerg. Up against Jason, a Terran player, one of the best in the Americas. Uh, he is, of course, Canadian and has been 6k many times in the past. I know he's been kind of streaming a few other games, trying different things, loving Age of Mythology, but with the patch announced, he's been back on the StarCraft ground, grind, and we're going to see how well he does. Uh, Barracks Gas, going to be interesting opening here. Very straightforward, very standard on this map. For those who don't know, there's minerals down here. 10 minerals on each of those to mine them open. That opens up this whole south side of the map. It's very Golden Wall-esque. We've got these two minerals here as well. 10 minerals on each of those to mine them out. Gold base there with two gases. Gold base here, but the gas is only on the northern side. So, I mean, it, it seems like one of these maps where I imagine most of the fighting on this map will happen either on this lane or just north of that on this lane. Usually, if you look at a heat map of these, there's, there's a lot of pushing through the middle. I think these maps end up most interesting when you have one player. Say the Zerg expands along the top left, kind of away from the Terran. And if the Terran expands on the third base there, fourth base here, towards the Zerg, you get this really interesting way the map plays out. Um, but that is kind of brave. I always feel like expanding towards the Zerg like that, as good as it can be, takes a special sort of bravery. And Jason, is at his heart a man that... Let's just say he's been traumatized. If you stream on the NA ladder for a decade, you you become a little conservative. You become, <laughs> you know, there's so many people just doing weird, dumb stuff, but not having the best macro on NA, especially as a Terran player. I feel like if you stream a lot and you just play against these silly builds all the time, you very quickly start realizing, you know what's most important to win games macro? It's, it's just build stuff well, don't get supply blocked, hit your build order just right. And I think Jason has basically prioritized that as his main focus for the longest time. Where sometimes I get frustrated playing him because I'm like, are you just not going to move out? Like, I've played TVTs versus Jason where I'm up three bases on him and I'm like, ooh, we got to get ready for the attack. Like, he knows I've got the whole map. He has to do something about it. And Jason's answer to that will be, no, I'm going to sit on three bases and just build ravens and tanks and vikings. And I'm just going to try to basically wait it out and rely on you being bad at late game, whereas I'm insanely good at late game. And I, I, I was like, you know, I, I used to get annoyed at it. I was like, seriously, man? Like, you're just going to sit there for like 40 minutes and then try to beat me in late game? And he's like, I think it's the best way to play. He played Protoss for a while. You know what he did every game, guys? Sky Toss. Just carry a storm every single game. And he was like, yeah, I'm just, I just want to see kind of, you know, how high this gets you on the ladder. Um, it feels like it's the, one of the most reliable ways to play PVZ, you know, PVZ especially. So he's like, I'm just going to keep doing it until people start slapping it down. And <laughs> essentially what I'm saying is when you play against Jason, you need to come in with a very specific plan and an understanding of how he's playing the matchup right now. Because very often, like he'll mix in a timing attack, he'll mix in an eight racks, but he is uh, a player who is always going to be hitting that macro just right. So you've got to hit your macro really well to keep up with him. But then you also want to usually hit some sort of swarming attack before he gets to his fifth base. Sometimes before he even gets to his fourth base. Like, letting him get to late game is scary. Absolutely scary. Now, I have the reason I've picked this replay, guys, is because we've heard the Broodlords come out in this game. And uh, we've heard that there is a bunch of different interactions with it, right? I got a whole bunch of replays because I was talking about Broodlords on my stream the other day. And uh, Bingo King said they've been trying to make Broodlords pretty much every single game dumped me a whole folder and they said oh yeah the one versus jason probably shows the most interactions and i was like okay i was like all right there's only one replay versus jason let's check this one out and i was thinking you know what jason's the highest level i think opponent that was in that folder of replays so number one should be good but number two everything i've said he's so good at turtling up and macroing like yeah yeah he's gonna he's gonna be a bit of a test for you he's played against broodlords many times before and he's a master of late game. Now, I gotta say, Jason, uh, sleeping at the helm a little bit, mate. There's a pervert right there. That's not a hallucination. He's probably been playing against the energy ability so much. He's like, oh, it's just a hallucination. And I'm like, it's a Zerg player. They don't have that ability, Jason. You know, that this Marine is just sleeping on, on duty. He's like, well, I don't have a specific order to go over there and shoot the Overlord. So how about I just chill? And I'm like, all right, man. Okie dokie. All right, you're just gonna... Just gonna sit there, hey? Mm, all right. Fusion Core's on the way. All right, we got a lair halfway done in the main. Natural Banely Nest coming up. 
Usually you'd go a second gas, but he's already got quite a bit of gas saved up. So Bingo King may be happy to just go, yeah, fast fourth base. And he's going nine queens. Remember, guys, hatcheries are 25 minerals cheaper, but queens are more expensive. We've seen a lot of players relying more on spore crawlers for de defense, trying to use lings or roaches against the ground and not be so reliant on queens. Bingo King saying, you know what? I'm just going to play the same as I did pre-patch. I'm going to have to pay for these nine queens. That is a lot of extra minerals, right? What is that? 225 extra minerals? But he's on four hatcheries where he's already saved 100 minerals there. So that's a net loss of 125. But, you know, you build a macro hatch, save another 25. You build a fifth base, save another 25. It's not a crazy change. And this is why, like, in terms of trying things out in a really big experimental, ambitious way, I'd love to see Zerg have 250 mineral hatcheries. But the queens cost 200 minerals, right? So, so you do the same change, but you, you double the change, essentially. Rather than 25 mineral discount for the hatchery, 25 mineral nerf in terms of the cost for the queen you you swap that around and uh you just really encourage a zerg to try and take more hatcheries and and to play a bit lighter on the queens which i think makes the play more interesting you know i think the queens for a long time have felt not so much like a decision and just like a mainstay and i, I kind of feel like below a certain skill level that is a lot more fun because using queens, because they're kind of a slow unit and it's a spellcaster to be effective as well and you need creep spread, it's kind of like a unit doesn't really get really good until you're in like maybe diamond two, where it becomes really, really amazing. But below that level, people play much more without the queens and it, it kind of, it creates a bit more of an interesting game flow. I remember, you know, there used to be so many fun harassments I'd always do in TVZ and for a long time, it's just kind of felt like, well, the Zerg's going to build nine queens every game. So whatever your, your strategy, it has to find, like, find a way to kill nine queens, which is one of the most ridiculous amounts of hit points you're ever going to have to get through with any timing attack, right? 175 hit points for Queen, Transfuse heals 125, you're going to have like 10 Transfuses, so it ends up being essentially like 3,000 hit points of just meaty Queen sacks, and you just can't take him down. So I understand where the change is coming from. I, I, like, I like the idea behind the change, I just kind of wish we could be more experimental and be like, who cares if the patch gets, you know, things a bit imbalanced, let's be a bit more experimental. And that's, I know, an approach which a lot of people would get very angry at, so fair enough. Zerglings doing some damage, a couple of SCVs do go down. A uh, couple, what is that, three? Three SCVs go down, Queen got left behind on the front. Dude, how early is this Hive and Spire? Hive and Spire is seven and a half minutes, already halfway done. Dude, Yamato's not Yamato's gonna finish after the hive is finished. Like, what in the heck? Double battle cruiser. Fourth command center is almost done. To be fair, Jason's economy growth is crazy. And he's he still hasn't lost a okay, one Hellion, three SCV is not bad at all. Big Ling counterattack getting ready to go. There's nothing defending that base. As long as Jason runs his workers, he'll be fine. This is where camera hockey's really coming important. Control click the workers, run them, run them, run them, run them. Oh my god, he's focusing on the front. Run, run, run. Oh, that was a slow response because he was he was killing Zerglings on the front. He lost a few Hellions to, a, I think, a Zergling semi-surround there. Got most of the Hellions out, but he did just lose a lot, guys. That was like 18, 19 more workers going down. Bingo King with big value. That's huge. That really slows down Jason's build-up. Gives Bingo King massive control. Bingo King's also at 83 workers, so really feels like it exacerbates things. Ah, uh, he gets a Hellion, but man, nah, uh, 20 more Zerglings for a Hellion. Jason will take that trade any day. Greatest buyer starts up at eight and a half minutes. Fourth command center is going to float out. Do we go forward or do we go to the corner with this? I actually don't know what your expansion pattern really should be on this map. 1-1 one, one upgrades are coming in for Jason. Not the fastest upgrades, but decently timed. Looks like an Overseer did contaminate a factory as well. So five factories there. No blue flame or servos or anything. Wait, guys, did he just make a third and fourth armory? Guys, did Jason forget that he made two armories? Jason forgot that he's already got 1-1 one, one upgrades on the way! <laughs> Wait, what? How do you forget that when you've already got your upgrades three quarters complete? Jason, what's going on, mate? Jason might be a little rusty, mate. Too much age of mythology. He's like, dude, this game's so hard. My workers don't auto build. What's happening, bro? I'm like, mate, you gotta scrape that rust off. You gotta get that rust off, man. This is like me. I've been playing so much Mecha Bellum lately. Uh, I play, I play RTS, and I'm like, oh man, man, I can't just like place my units and then watch them fight. This is crazy. It's almost like this is a real-time strategy and not an auto battler. Bingo King's going to come in for a PP attack, guys. For a second, I thought he might just morph Broodlords on the edge of the map and start siege the base. He's going to come in. No way! Guys, he goes for the armory! The Jason's accidental third and fourth armory actually works out so well for him. He's got two armories up here because he ends up getting, getting an armory beat down. He's still got three armories, which is more than you need. No, don't rebuild it! 
Jason, don't re don't rebuild it. No. No, mate. He's like, damn, you killed my armory. He starts plus two. Come on, mate. You gotta realize you've already made upgrades. <laughs> Ling's try to get on the tanks, so the aliens do guard them. This is hilarious. Um, hurricane thrusters or engines, sorry, that's the cyclone movement speed, as well as blue flame there. Another battle cruiser. Four battle cruisers. Okay, so he's gonna be enacting the battle cruiser tanks. Battle cruiser is good for tanking good for complicating things so the zerg has to keep some corruptors out ready to fight them and every engagement every couple minutes they can just yamato a big unit kill it for free and it just gives you this extreme efficiency over time but the trick with battle cruisers is guys your whole goal is never lose them keep them alive literally forever and you'll be fine turrets and a cyclone will defend the corruptors so that's done man i feel like the greatest fire was done a while ago and if he went like eight broodlords and then just rallied corruptors to deal with the bcs it would be game over cyclone tank can't deal with that but now thors are on the way and I feel like Bingo King's giving Jason more time than he should. On the other hand, great creep spread. Taking the middle hatcheries there. Is he, is he, he might take this one at some point because those are the two kind of contested bases. Lings, get on top of the tanks. Three, four tanks will go down here, but you got to pull back. Oh, the Bane... Even though it, the first Lings were very efficient, but the Bane Lings got wrecked by those three tanks in the back. Really good defense by Jason. And Yamato, 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 Yamato. Come on, come on, come on. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. Get him. All right, he's going to take out how many? He does one, two, three, four... Oh, he actually doubled up his casts on those Yamatos, guys. I think I think he only got two Corruptors there with three Yamatos, which was a little unfortunate. And yeah, he's got one that didn't quite fire. Maybe he'd already used it earlier. Ultra Cavern's on the way. Bingo King is adding air attack upgrades, as well as that Ultra Cavern. Has only one, one, one on the ground as well. Those Evo Chambers need to get working. Better keep those upgrades going. This is going to be a long game. I feel like Adrenal Glands missing is also really big. Now, Jason, he's got the top right side. He's got, so that's going to be a fifth base. And he's building mass command center right now, guys. Lots of command centers. And actually, that that is not an orbital. That's going to be a planetary. So Jason wants to take the high ground and, and maybe do the same down here. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so I, I remember now. Jason played this style versus me a few months ago. Looks like he's still doing it. He's going to try and go ghost mech. He's got two barracks ghosts coming in. Keep in mind, no engineering by upgrades. So the ghosts aren't very good at fighting. Um, not very good at tanking or dealing with Zerglings. But he's going to have the Ghost to EMP, deal with the Spellcasters, do some snipes. So they're a very good support unit. Later on, he can add some upgrades to help them out as well. But he's got to get those 3-3 mech upgrades. Right now, he's plus two vehicle plating is on the way. These Corruptors are doing a bit of a weird party. Oh, look at this, guys. I did not realize El Dorado had Moopies on it. Big attack in the middle. Ling Pain Ravager comes in. Big Biles! Damaging units, but not actually killing any. And what Jason is just holding. So clean, so efficient. The Corruptors could do a bit of a wee there, but I, I think he knows the Cyclones will probably get there in time to defend. The Changelings and the Creep for Vision is great. This base, Fleet Mining in the middle. Bingo King sucking up so many resources. 88 workers, more Lings building. And Lings are so expendable. That's the thing is, yeah, Bingo King's trading inefficiently, but Bingo King seems to not really care. It's like, you know what? Do a few transfusers, get a bit more value. Keep that Creep forward. The scary thing is, though, you, you had an advantage earlier, and now Jason is going Mass Command, and he's got a Planetary in front of his Planetary. This one's probably going to become a planetary as well. Ooh, so, guys, something you have to keep in mind. If Broodlords do get made, which, I mean, I was I was told there'd be Broodlords of this replay. Greatest fire has been done for a while. We haven't seen a single Broodlord. Second Spire going down to increase those air upgrades. Um, planetaries have one less armor. And remember, with the Broodlings getting increased attack speed, and already the Broodling naturally is a four damage unit, guys. So pre previously, if you had, like, maxed out um, upgrades on the Broodling, it would go to seven damage per hit. But the planetary would have five armor with the Neo Steel upgrade. Which, as you can imagine, we don't actually have it yet, but hopefully he does remember to get it. You'd be doing two damage a hit. Now you'll be doing three damage a hit with plus three broodlings against it. Unfortunately, Bingo King's completely forgot about his Evo Chamber upgrades. He's only got plus one melee. Melee, sorry. So the broodlings themselves are going to be doing a very low amount of damage. Plus three, three is on the way, including plus three vehicle plating. And I feel like Bingo King forgetting a few key upgrades could really hurt the broodlords' efficacy. The Broodlords are out. I think they got spotted. The Thors are in single fire mode, but there's only two Thors, and one of them's heavily damaged right now as well. It's hiding underneath the Ravens. The Battlecruiser's over on that right side. Is he throwing these away on purpose? I think he is. Jason's like, can you clear this supply up, please? But he's making a Liberator. I think the Vikings are pretty much non-negotiable against Broodlords. Getting six, maybe eight Broodlords out. Enough to at least two shot, but preferably one shot a Broodlord. Gives you this really nice kind of ranged micro unit that you can use to pick away at them. And as long as you don't take big fungals and parasitic bombs, it just gives you some range to your army, some poking ability to scare the Broodlords back. Now, you can see the Broodlords, the moment they get in range, they will instantly attack, right? The, the Broodlings aren't going to screw around, but Battlecruisers say juicy, 
And that's four Yamatos. Oh! What the heck? No, he just doubled up. Can I see he only killed two Broodlords with four Yamatos? Jason's been rapid firing, I think. I think he's rapid fire spamming those too quickly. You gotta be careful spamming rapid fire. Always better to do individual button click, button click, button click. Classic manual micro is the more reliable technique. Oh, Planetary goes down. Command Center is burning. Violet, if he can get one more pile on that Command Center, it's gone, but he gets trapped. He gets trapped. Bingo King gets trapped on the top of the map. Very nice move there for Jason. Biles damage a few of his units, take out a Hellbat, but they don't really kill anything. And that Command Center did get repaired in the top right. Nice moves for Jason. He's got a Command Center down there as well, but that gold base is being mined out. Bingo King has dropped his work account, which is absolutely the right move. He's got a big bank. 66 drones is more than enough. He's got to start mining gas a bit more aggressively, though. That's kind of what he's been missing. He's taken gas in the bottom. He's forgotten to take this gas. Has ta Here we go. He's going to take this hatchery now as well. These gases. Bingo King's way too mineral heavy and is correcting that right now. But you know what? You know what's not being corrected? The Evo Chamber upgrades. These broodlings are going to suck, man. Look at that. Look how fast they fire their first volley. Remember, they used to just hang out at the edge of range and take a while to get that volley out. The DPS boost is crazy because remember, armor isn't done yet. These are only two armor planetaries. They would have been three armor pre-patch since the Neo Steel armor upgrade is not done yet. Ling's coming on the south side, denying that base. Another planetary goes down. Bingo King. Dude, the new Broodlord is really smooth, but Yamato goes down. I think he doubled it up again, but he does still get three Broodlords that time. Three Broodlords going down to Yamato. He just needs Thors or Vikings to deal with these. Bingo King's kind of bull bullying him right now. And Jason needs to hang on. Jason was so efficient earlier in this game. I think he was like 8,000 versus 16,000 earlier. Now, he's still got an 8,000 lead, but that means like they've traded evenly over the last few minutes since that point. So, you know, you've you got to keep the ratio up as the Terran. You don't want to just be like, a lot of people are like, oh, but if it's an 8,000 difference and you keep that, that's good. And it's like, well, no. It means you were trading good earlier and then you're trading evenly past that point. So right now the gap is seven and a half thousand and, and you want that gap to get bigger as the Terran or you're trading evenly in, you know, from this moment of time onwards. So I, I talk about this a lot and I've had so many confused comments over the years. I'm trying to be really clear in how I explain that because I, I get I, overall, yes, if you maintain an advantage, you've been more efficient than them. But StarCraft is about what's happening at each moment in the game. So we're kind of live commentating at each phase who is more efficient. Please repair, 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 dude. Don't lose the planetary. Oh, okay. He starts repairing it. That's good. Order oh, Raven comes forward, but it's going to die to the Corruptors. Anti-Arm missile goes down. You can see those Broodlings are still very slow themselves. But the Broodlords themselves have been bullying, man. And Oh, nice. Yamato's on the Corruptors. Now, I think what's missing is Vikings, guys. Um, are there extra starports? We've got two reactors. Is there a two reactors in a tech lab? I mean, where are the Vikings? I think they're way more important than Libs. Lib Girth has been upgraded, and you can see a nice girthy Lib zone there, but uh, not really covering anything. These Fungals trapping, and the Broodlords, look at how fast they're attacking at max range as these Thors aren't even fighting because they're trying to move back. The, the ability to just skirmish, throw a Fungal, do big damage, pull out, is definitely massively increased with this change. And that's how you want to use the Brood Broodlord anyway, because remember, you want to reload both Broodlords Get the double damage in so you do 40 burst damage from the two strikes. Get two broodlings on top of them nibbling. And then you pull back, go again kind of thing, you know. And you can see he's even just standing at the edge and fighting a few times because he's catching Jason out. This this high ground area being controlled by the Zerg is a disaster. I think if you play this setup, defending that first planetary was crucial. And I think losing that is where Bingo King's being able to push Jason off this high ground. Now, I think looking at this change so far... I, I do think Jason could be doing way better versus the Broodlords. That, 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 that goes without saying. The Thors are getting hammered. They're stuck in the mineral line. Oh, the ghost snipes, 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 snipes. If he starts sniping, he can maybe make this okay. Two battle cruisers go down. Snipes are starting to land. The Corruptors are starting to drop. Okay, the Corruptors are starting to drop like flies, but a lot of Thors already went down. There's not that many ghosts left. Remember, the ghosts only have not that many upgrades. They have no infantry upgrades. And plus three ship weapons is now on the way though a few vikings on the front will really help out i feel like these vikings have been missing this whole time but with spore crawlers and creep on the high ground above your base it's so hard to hang on oh the units lost tab remember what i said there was an 8,000 gap before now it's down to 5,000. over the last few minutes bingo king has been trading more efficiently than jason that's a disaster because bingo king has the two middle bases as well it's gonna start sieging mass transfuse on the broodlords it's a bit of a crazy move and, and absolutely the right call to pull back but the transfuse is keeping those broodlords alive and that planetary taking such big damage. There's no SCVs there to repair it. Double planetary. They've got 68 kills and 62 kills. Come on, mate. You got to give him that, that good old 69. Got to throw another broodling in just so this planetary on the right side can get that hopefully before it does go down. But dude, we are, we are definitely seeing that 
I think the first volley being so quick is a big game changer. Especially with the way the Broodling stacks up shots. I think it does make a big difference. It really does. Yeah, I, I think this does make a big difference. At max range, for them to not screw around, the shots just shoot, shoot, shoot. Look at that. Rather than having to float to the front constantly, it really does change their DPS drastically when they're at maximum range. And I think in this matchup specifically, when you're in these sort of entrenched late game turtle positions, that's the most common scenario for you to be fighting at max range for an extended period. Whereas it's a bit, I'd say it's a little more rare with Protoss where Tempests will punish you, right? That they'd be picking you off. You, can't, you still dart in, throw a volley and dart away. But you can see that Bingo King's able to not just dart in, but stand there for like five seconds, dishing out the hurt and then pull back. And Jason just hasn't been able to answer. I think a defensive nuke would be really good. Does he have any nukes? No, he doesn't have any nukes. A nuke clearing these spores out would be nice. Vikings come forward, dodges the fungal. Watch out for Parasitic Bomb though. Nice Parasitic Bomb on the battle cruiser. Oh, spready, spready, spready. Okay, does spread it apart. Not too bad there. Vikings moving into spore range though. A bit of repair on this army would be really nice, but watch out for the fungal. Watch out for the fungal, Bingo King. Lands a single shot. Does get a fungal there. He's shooting from the high ground. Oh, and there we go. Jason does lose a bunch of units. Ghost Hellions going down, but Parasitic Bomb and Corruptors diving on top of the Vikings. He does split away the Viking, but he's already taken a lot of damage. We need to see more Yamados in action. Jason is using one of the most complicated armies in the game. There's a reason he likes to entrench this with planetaries to support it. It's hard to use this arm in the open. Can he overwhelm? Bingo King pulling back. Remember, Spore Crawlers do 20 damage a shot now as well. And, and it feels like in this version of the patch, that actually, even though they die quickly, it does make a big difference, right? Because spores are a big part of this specific sort of late game strategy. Fungals just rooting him in place. Feels like a lot of the Thors are fighting queens or broodlings and stuff. Only a few of them are actually attacking the broodlords. The broodlords are falling, but I think this is an amazing trade for a guy with, you know, such a huge bank. Only down 5,000 resources and units lost, which is huge. Five or 6,000 behind in the resources lost. Ever since that, like, what, 12, 13 minute mark, Bingo King has traded even or better with Jason. And that is massive. That is so, 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 so huge. Yeah, I, this is, this is, this is so funky. This, this, this Broodlord change is actually so big. I mean, I, 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 can't, I imagine this is going to be one they straight up remove in with, with patch changes. I, I imagine we're going to get an announcement tomorrow, the day after, maybe already by the time this video goes out. I keep waking up every day and checking StarCraft Reddit and going, wait, you know, new changes announced. I keep thinking it's going to happen any day. I think it will happen very soon. So hopefully by the time this video is out, this is already old news because I, I think this this does look a little too strong. Bingo King, I, think I would say, is outplaying Jason a little bit, but... um. That's always how StarCraft works. You combine balance and outplaying together and you get bullying. And, and that's exactly what's happening right now. You're gonna lose the Broodlord's Bingo King. You know what? That was really dumb, Bingo King. You almost lost 10 Broodlords to a nuke. And you know what? If it wasn't for the change, you might actually not have killed that ghost before the nuke came down. That was crazy close. Bingo King is like, I'd like to show you how strong this Broodlord instantly attacking at max range changes, pig. L look at this. Hold my beer. Girthy libs going in. Yamato cannon trying to overwhelm. Jason realizes he's got to push you off this high ground or he's done for. So he's going to try and man mode it, push through. But he doesn't have enough Hellions to deal with the Lings. The Corruptor's overwhelming the air. Dude, a few good Hellion shots on those Zerglings are very nice. But it doesn't matter. There's just not enough Terran here, man. And Bingo King remaxing on Lings and Festers, all sorts of units. And once you get the Terran on their heels, I feel like this is always what happens where it feels like Terran's like, I think I just have enough units to deal with what you have. But then they realize they've only got like two Hellions and 60 Lings just run in. Zerg's like, oh, my, my unit that when you're really well set up does nothing is actually finding efficiency. And that's what's happening. The Ling reinforcements keep finding damage because Jason's already on his heels, not with the correct kind of tools in place right now and uh this is just beautiful play by bingo king really well done and you can see why he's rushing broodlord so very quickly and uh, i gotta say yeah after after doing this dive it looks like this game's over by the way it, it could end at any moment i i definitely think this broodlord's probably a little bit too strong right now um and i would imagine we just scrap that change because the broodlord has always kind of been balanced and, and worked around that delay on attacking at maximum range that's just the way it's always worked and I think there is a chance to you can you can flip you know you can rotate you can you can turn the broodlord this way and that and whenever the opponent tries to close the distance with you and gets a bit closer 
it does, you know, go to full attack speed anyway. I think that's okay behavior. I think it's okay to have fancy, somewhat complicated units. If we want to change that, we probably don't want to rebuff Broodlords or, or at least remove the nerfs on brood Broodlings at the same time. And we want to kind of keep it simple, test that one thing in isolation, and who knows, maybe you lower, like, the damage of the Broodlord or something like that, but I think it's such a big change, and I think at the moment, like, let's, let's tab out really quickly, let's go back and look at those balance changes. I think if we revert these two nerfs, that already should be somewhat sizable at giving them a little bit of their power back, um, but I think fixing that bug is such a drastic change, this is probably worth, like, six of these two changes up here. You guys let me know what you think in the comments. Is this busted? Should this just never be touched? And does anyone know, is this something that was introduced in a certain patch of StarCraft? Or was it like this since day one, since release? Let me know in the comments if anyone knows the answer to that. But uh, definitely something where I wouldn't call this a bug. I'd call this a behavioral quirk. And I think if we're going to change it or continue with this, the next patch notes needs to just be a bit more clearly written explaining what's actually happening because i wouldn't call it a bug i'd say it's a behavior that's baked into how the unit works and um yeah and i would also say this will effectively give it plus 40 percent dps at max like when just when standing and fighting at max range or something like that because i think that example earlier we saw of was it like 25 versus 39 seconds to kill nine stalkers with the broodlords was very telling that is an absolutely massive buff so anyway you guys let me know what's going to happen. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching this deep dive into the Broodlord and its changes in this patch. We'll see you in the next video. Goodbye and good night.